This high security safe is meant to protect everything from guns to cash in stores to narcotics in a pharmacy. Without the combination, it's supposed to be impenetrable. But these two security researchers can open it in seconds. No drills, no cutting tools, no stethoscope, just two different digital flaws that can entirely defeat this safe's security. And the company that makes the lock on this safe, it told me that it has no plans to update its code, leaving safes across the US and homes, retail outlets, and pharmacies vulnerable. I'm Andy Greenberg. I investigate the strange, dark, and subversive sides of technology for Wired. This is Hack Lab. We digitally cracked a high security safe. I'm here in Las Vegas for DEF CON, America's biggest hacker conference. Two of the security researchers I've been talking to here are James Rowley and Mark Omo, who revealed for the first time on stage at the conference that they've discovered not one, but two techniques for cracking a popular line of electronic locks sold by the China-based firm SecureRAM and used on eight brands of high-end electronic safes. So what was it that got you all started on this research project that eventually led you to find these two safe cracking techniques? We read the New York Times article in 2023 about how the FBI was able to call Liberty Safe and get a code from them. Two years ago, Liberty Safe, which markets itself as America's number one heavy duty home and gun safe manufacturer, responded to an FBI warrant by giving agents the combination to open the safe of a criminal suspect in the midst of the Bureau's investigation of the January 6th, 2021 invasion of the US Capitol building. So it really blew me away that for this physical security product that's not internet connected, that the FBI is able to call a manufacturer and get a code from them, and they have the keys to the kingdom to open a safe that you own. Mark and James wanted to understand how this apparent backdoor worked. So they took a closer look at Liberty Safes and discovered that the company does keep a reset code for every safe and makes it available to US law enforcement if they have a warrant or court order. But that was just the beginning of the story. The locks that Liberty Safe used were actually made separately by SecureRAM, a third party vendor. And we focused in on the SecureRAM ProLogic locks, their higher end digital series of locks. And one of the most interesting features that caught our eye is they have this reset functionality where you can through a locksmith, reset your lock, even if you've forgotten all the combinations on it. So it turns out that these SecureRAM ProLogic locks used on Liberty Safe safes, but also many other brands have this reset method and you all cracked it. Yeah, we were able to dump all the firmware out of the microcontroller and inside every single safe lock is the secret algorithm that they use to calculate the code that you need to reset the lock. And we were able to reverse engineer and replicate it so we can open almost any ProLogic lock. We call that attack reset heist. So can you show us? Yeah, let's do it. For our safe cracking experiment, we headed to the headquarters of the Red Team Alliance, a Las Vegas based company focused on physical security research and covert entry instruction. So for this first technique, you all don't even need any tools. Nope, just my phone. Well, how does it work? So let's imagine you own a safe and you forgot your code. You could call a locksmith and they could then communicate with SecureRAM to provide that challenge to them. And then they would give back the appropriate response to reset all the codes on your safe. So this is like a kind of approved interaction between an authorized locksmith and SecureRAM, but somehow you all cracked it. Yeah, the firmware on this lock has everything that we needed to know to recreate that secret algorithm on my phone right here. So we can try the default code from the factory, all ones. And of course that doesn't work. So what we need to do, is we're gonna go ahead into this recovery mode here. And we need to type in all nines for the recovery code. And it's gonna show us this challenge on the screen. This is like a series of numbers and you're gonna copy those into your program here on your phone. Exactly. It's gonna show us the response that we need to provide to the lock here. So it's like a challenge number and then a response number that you type back into the keypad. That's exactly right. Then it's gonna warn us that we're gonna reset the whole lock to factory defaults. Of course, we're gonna continue. There we go, all users deleted. So now it is back in this factory default setting and that 111111 code will actually open it. Yep, give it a try. Okay. There we go. Nice. Uh, so is there some easy way for safe owners to disable that reset mechanism? I mean, that seemed way too easy. Yeah, so safe owners can actually change what's known as the encryption code on these locks. And that'll prevent someone from doing this without knowing that code. But SecureRAM doesn't recommend changing the codes in its reset method in any online user documentation the researchers could find, only in a manual for some locksmiths and manufacturers. In another SecureRAM webinar, the researchers found SecureRAM suggests changing the codes isn't necessary and that the codes are usually 
usually never changed. We purchased a bunch of these locks from eBay, and on every ProLogic lock we bought, these codes were left at the default. This process worked on every single one that we tested. So everybody who has a safe with a secure and ProLogic lock could change the encryption code, which would protect themselves from this technique, which obviously they should do given how easy that just seemed to be. But you have a second technique, right? Yep, one that's not as easy to protect yourself against. This second, even simpler hacking technique uses a device that, if it were to become available more widely or sold online, could leave safes across the US vulnerable. After all, beyond Liberty Safe, Secure Ram ProLogic locks are used by a long list of manufacturers. Fort Knox, High Noble, Fire King, ProSteel, Rhino Metals, Sun Welding, Corporate Safe Specialists, and Pharmacy Safe companies Senex and NarcSafe. The locks can also be found on safes used by CVS for storing narcotics. In a moment, I'm going to try pulling off this second technique myself to see just how easy it really is. But first, I reached out to SecureRAM to find out what they'd done to fix these vulnerabilities. When I asked SecureRAM about this, they told me that they have no plan to fix this at all. In fact, they have a new version of the lock that they're going to come out with before the end of the year. But they've essentially said, if you want that more secure version, you just got to buy a new lock for your safe. It's an interesting approach. As SecureRAM's director of sales, Jeremy Brooks, told me, we're not going to be offering a firmware package that upgrades it. We're going to offer them a new product. In other words, if you want a security update, buy a new lock. SecureRAM's CEO, Chunlei Zhou, also wrote in a longer statement to Wired that Mark and James' techniques are already known to security industry professionals. He also said their methods required specialized knowledge, skills, and equipment. To get a response to SecureRAM's claims, I spoke to Bhavik Javadi, a co-founder of the Red Team Alliance and a professional hacker specializing in physical security. The CEO of SecureM also told me in a statement that the techniques that Mark and James have shown here are already known. Known by who? Locksmiths have always had some sort of insider secret knowledge of some kind. Are they known to the people that it impacts the most, the customers? Because I suspect a lot of people would make different purchasing decisions. The CEO of SecureM also told me in a statement that they have never seen a single safe lock defeated through a use of this attack. You don't know what you don't know because people don't talk about it. So like, maybe he doesn't know, but it's definitely happened. The most sensitive, most important situations where this attack would be used, you wouldn't know because it doesn't leave any obvious traces. When you heard about how this works, were you surprised at how easy it was? I'm not surprised by how easy it was. I think the, the thing that always strikes me as stupid is any kind of backdoor by design. You can call it a factory recovery method or customer support tool. Everything with enough focus and resources can be reverse engineered successfully. There's no good reason to put a backdoor in a product. And that's what I have a bigger problem with. So can SecureM fix this in their code? Can they push out some sort of update or patch? SecureM on these locks, they're not connected to the internet. So they don't have a way to push firmware updates to them. If new firmware was developed that mitigated these issues, you could go lock to lock with a tool, but it would be a very manual process. So could just anybody figure out what you all have done here? Are you releasing enough information that other people could replicate your technique and use it for crime? So we're not releasing the techniques that we have. We think the potential for abuse is way too high. But how easy would it be for somebody to just figure out your techniques and do them themselves? I think it would take about a week for someone skilled in the art to execute all the work that we did and produce a similar tool or similar research. That's a pretty practical risk. Absolutely. Now, the researchers are going to demonstrate their other hack, one that's even harder to defend against. So what are we calling this second trick? We call that one Code Snatch. Code Snatch, rather than a phone app type thing, we got a custom tool that we made that is gonna go in through the battery door of the lock. So we're gonna start by taking that out and then just inserting this little guy in there, kind of start feeling around for the pins there basically looking for a little debug port in there that we're able to get the unlock codes out for. There we go, just like that, we've got the code. So I'm just gonna put the battery back in there, turn the lock back on, let it think for a second. Then all we gotta do is type it in. There we go. So what is this little device that you all built and how is it possible that it can extract the super code so easily? It's all off the shelf hardware. That is basically just a Raspberry Pi Pico with a little screen on it and some pins up here. We're trying to set those pins on a programming port, which is also a debugging port. And that lets us read out everything from the lock's microcontroller, including all the codes that are in the lock. Those codes are stored in an encrypted manner, but we can also read out the keys to decrypt them. And we decode that right there on the little Raspberry Pi Pico and show it on the screen. It's kind of shocking that the locks 
keypad itself contains this super code and all you have to do is find a way to extract it. The firmware in the keypad and the firmware in the latch both need to be reworked. Securium stores the codes in the keypad part of the safe. And really what needs to happen is those codes need to be stored inside the safe, behind all the concrete and steel that protects them. So you can't get at them with a tool or something like we did here. If you've created this locked box that is meant to be secure, maybe you should put the sensitive things like the combination to open it inside instead. Absolutely. You'd sure think so. So can I give this a try myself? It looked like it took a little bit of finesse. Give it a try yourself and uh, right. see just how easy it is. Battery out. If any idiot like me can do it, that means that somebody could start selling this thing on the dark web and then anybody can open one of these safes anywhere in the world. I'm gonna turn it on now. Yeah, go for it. I'm pushing the top of it towards me, right? Yeah. Go. Oh, there it is. Hey. Took a go. minute, but I got it. You got the code, type it in. There we go. And that's basically our tool that opens the high security electronic safe lock. It won a few hundred thousand dollars of uh, fake money. <laughs> Why did you decide to go public with your techniques? You know, SecureRAM's director of sales, Jeremy Brooks, says that you are singling out SecureRAM and trying to discredit the company. So that's not it at all. We want SecureRAM to fix this issue, but more importantly, we want people to be aware of the flaws that they have today. Mark and James are not the first to raise concerns about Secure Ram's locks. Last year, U.S. Senator Ron Wyden wrote an open letter to Michael Casey, then director of the National Counterintelligence and Security Center, urging Casey to warn American businesses that safe locks made by SecureRAM, which is owned by a Chinese parent company, have a manufacturer reset capability that could be used as a backdoor, a risk that had already led to SecureRAM locks being prohibited for government use, along with every other safe that has a manufacturer reset capability, even as SecureRAM locks are widely used in safes in U.S. private companies. When I wrote to the senator about the researchers' safe-cracking techniques, Wyden sent me a statement. Experts have warned for years that backdoors will be exploited by our adversaries. Yet, instead of acting on my warnings and those of security experts, the government has left the American public vulnerable, Wyden writes. This is exactly why Congress must reject calls for new backdoors in encryption technology and fight all efforts to force U.S. companies to weaken their encryption and facilitate government surveillance. When I asked representatives at High Noble and Liberty Safe, they told me they weren't previously aware of any vulnerabilities in security secure RAM locks, but are now reviewing the issue and investigating options, including using alternative locks. CVS declined to comment, but said that safety is a top priority. This story is, in some ways, a familiar one in the security industry. A company builds an insecure product, refuses to update it, and it takes a couple of white hat hackers to create a proof of concept hacking technique that shows us definitively how vulnerable we really are. But there's another lesson here too. If you build a backdoor into someone's secrets for law enforcement or even for the product's creator, it's often just a matter of time until that backdoor becomes an entryway for uninvited guests too. This is Hack Lab. I'm Andy Greenberg. Thank <music> you.